Bringing people and communities together on secularsounds.org. City. My name's Teresa, and on tonight's show we've got the dazzling burlesque queen candy kisses. We've got the love song of the week, some great tunes, but for now we've got Michael Bublé and That's Life. Well, that was 
That's Life by Michael Bublé. I hope you're all good this week and had a good weekend, etc. Um, last week's show, we got some great emails and feedback, actually, from Caroline. And um, I know you enjoyed the show, but you can download that again. Any of the shows you can always download. But tonight, I have got Candy in the studio with me, and we're smiling. Um, we've got a little bit of a format, but we're going to just go with the flow. So good <laughs> evening, Candy, and welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. <laughs> You're very welcome. Candy does a show after hours, so um, listen, stay tuned, because it's a great show. Yeah. And um, we had great fun, me and George, picking the, sh- the songs for tonight, because we wanted them a bit showy and stuff. Aww. So we've got a little bit of Frank Sinatra and bits and pieces like that, yeah. So, Candy, hello. Hello. And... Um, Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm five foot eight. No, yeah. I'm not. I'm, not. I'm <laughs> blue five. eyes. No. Uh, <laughs> I want to say I'm a natural blonde, but this platinum natural blonde comes out of a bottle that <laughs> my hairdresser gives me. Um, I am, I, I, Caddy Kiss is obviously isn't my real name, but it's a name I choose to go by on stage. Yes, uh, fine. It's lovely. In, thank you. I work in burlesque. Uh, I say work. It doesn't often feel like work. And I'm a photographer, um, acting. Yay. And um, lots of other things, fire breathing, all sorts, and sort of taking me around the world. And I, not likely, I actually have been around the world doing it. And it sort of paved the way for me to go from where it was originally, which was in the military, to showgirl. Let's <laughs> let's break it down then. So you was in the military. So let's talk about that for a little minute. <laughs> I was in the RAF. How long for? Six-ish years, yeah. What did you do in the RAF? Uh, looked really cute. No, I bet, I bet you look really good in the uniform. I probably look like a no. I look like a sack of spuds. Do you think? Are the uniforms a bit? I love the forces. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But they the girls' uniform. I'm mean, here. I am with you about the RAF uniform. What a girly thing to do. But um, yes, they can fit nicely. But they've got this little pooch thing of fabric at the front of your skirt. <laughs> so I think it's so you can be pregnant yeah, and still wear the uniform. Grow into good. it. Yeah. <laughs> pick up your waff bum <laughs> at the stores I don't know but um, I really loved it I had a really good time made some amazing friends uh, I'm still friends with quite a lot now and actually I grew up really quickly in the military yeah. um, as well as you've got to be quite self-sufficient you've got to learn very 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 quickly how to work as a team and be responsible for your actions but also those of around you where was you based? Um, my last base was um, RF Norfolk in London right okay. um, it's great because it's on the central line and where did you do your training? Um, Holton, so actually just down the road. Down the road. Yeah, yeah, all my training was done there. And are you from Milton Keynes? No, no, I live here, but um, I'm, I was born in Devon, but I sort of... I know you had that accent. I am I a farmer. Oh myself, my God. Like, I wanted do... to go like that. Everyone, you girt big lushy, you. Oh, yeah. do you miss it? Um, I love it. Oh God, it's really Seriously, coming out. I love I'll it. it I love it. I do. Um, I've just been down to Yeovil, but um, which in Somerset. Was, but I was born in Devon, but I spent a lot of my childhood in Yeovil. Yeah. Um, I've just been down there. Uh, I I love the West Country. Um, I, I I as soon as I hit Stonehenge, I'm on the home run yeah. because that's like halfway between here and there. So, and then the soil changes colour. Do do, have you ever noticed that when you're Devon, the soil yeah. changes colour, and that's when I know I'm like I'm I'm back home. in my country. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we lived in Cornwall for many years. Oh, so, we're the border patrol for you, yeah, Devon. I know, I know. And oh, actually, <laughs> we lived in Devon for a little while as well. But um, I always call it going home. Yeah, I love it. As um, soon as I get past Bristol and I'm on that downward spiral, <laughs> that's it. I just love it because it means that people just seem more honest. To it. Cause it doesn't matter. I don't think they are, but it's their tone. It's like putting on a warm jump when I go I down there. I Everyone's lovely. I don't think it's because they're honest. I just think it's the perception their accent perception gives me. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is. So it. anyway, you came out of the RAF and then what did you decide to do? Um, I was doing stand-up comedy um, as sort of workshops on the weekends. When Hang I was on doing... a minute, Candy. How do we go from being in the RAF to... Oh. You're missing bits out. No, I'm not. I'm How not. I do swear, you go I swear. to be a stand-up comedian no i swear so in the military we're allowed days off surprise surprise yeah and what happened was rather than just sit in the block where i lived with all the girlies i used to jump on a train to london because there was a tube outside the station and um, the camp and go into london i used to do like comedy store workshop just to learn a bit more because i always liked comedy and also felt that you know joan rivers being my idol yeah, yeah. <laughs> um i miss her um i uh i wanted to be joan rivers <laughs> Just about as much plastic surgery. Mm. And so I went to the comedy store and started doing workshops. And then when I left the military, I had, you know, I'd spent a lot of the time, which a lot of people maybe rebel and do the craziness Mm. in the military. So Mm. I was like, well, I kind of want to rebel now. 
So I did get a really good job working in London on the South Bank. I didn't really fit in as well, I suppose, there. And luckily for me, the burlesque career kicked off because a performer didn't show up at a, com- a stand-up comedy gig I was doing. Mm. And they just looked at me and said, you're a girl, quite sexistly. You know how to dance, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> so I made up a funny dance. And I said, oh, that's very burlesque. Hadn't got a clue. Really? Thankfully, you know, there's a good old wiki. <laughs> Had a quick look, read up there, realised what burlesque was about. At the time, there wasn't as much information about it as there is now, and it was still very much underground. Mm. And I did start hearing a few names bouncing around, like Immodesty Blaze yeah. and people. So I started looking them up, and I managed to find a venue that Immodesty was performing at and watched her, and I was like, oh, I, I, that's stunning. But that's kind of... I wanted to do the other end of Burlesque, which was more about the uh, high energy level and craziness side of it, rather than the very beautiful body, because she's got an absolutely stunning body, but I Has didn't... She? Oh. Oh my gosh, does she ever. That lady is, oh, oh, it's like Sophia Loren curves. I want to say, I want to say she's a banging bird, but that's wrong. <laughs> you can she's say beautiful. That. Yeah, I said that anyway. Yeah, yeah, she's stunning. We, I mean, she's, she's kind of coined as the, um, I think she called, she's called on her website, the queen of European burlesque, or, but she was the queen of British burlesque and mm. um, is quite, you know, quite still reserved, revered and is quite high up in her game as well. And obviously, a lot of us know Dita Von Teese. She's yeah. come over from America. Yeah. And, but one of the first people who I saw was a Modesty Blaze in, in the big names. Mm. And um, so I started sort of exploring burlesque more. And because there wasn't, it wasn't as saturated the market as it is now, so I was able to... That's sort of really... because... How long ago was that? Oh, I'm going to show my age. Seven, no, seven, seven like... years? Seven years? Yeah, it's yeah. about seven or eight years now. But we've had an influx of all the vintage stuff, which is why I think the burlesque and everything sort of come yeah. about. Yeah, and more. also, like, you've had films and Moulin Rouge, yeah. the film Burlesque coming out. Yeah. Um, you know, there's people jumping on the bandwagon. There's a lot of people, I mean, I, I teach, and um, a lot of people have come to me after they've been to classes with other teachers, sort of thing, and what they've been taught is good, but it's, losing sometimes it's lost the essence of us because as with any f- trend you do get the bandwagon jumpers who are like oh i'll learn a quick buck and mm. so actually we've got a really long and long and rich history in burlesque and you know it's kind of it's up there with the other theater arts it's not just simply whipping on a corset whipping off a corset there's a lot of things going on eat mm. gypsy rose lee yeah, you know lily sincere mm. do you oh and she yeah. you should read the story about it's her one of my favorites read read her read her book it's absolutely she's there's, there's biographies about it, but she's absolutely superb and mm. a very savvy businesswoman um and and she's sort of i suppose we like to call her the grandmother of burlesque because mm. she was the first woman to say that it's not about the body there's a great thing on youtube of her taking off a glove reciting um and, and talking about politics and today's society while removing garments it seems like the removal of the garments are completely secondary to what she's actually saying because what mm. she's saying is very intelligent mm. and um i really like that about her and you know then you have like who's one of my idols is kitten deville in yeah. um, america yeah. who is a bump and grind queen she's called queen of the quake we all get these catchy little taglines and stuff and she's very much into almost belly dancey sort of hip movement 60s vibe and it's not just course chain. And what I love about burst was that it's it, one thing it should never be is cookie cutter. Mm. You shouldn't just be able to churn out the same style. Yeah. And I found that a lot of classes and a lot of students who were coming to me were like, I'm not really getting in with my burlesque. I'm like, well, let's see. I went, oh, that's because you're performing the same routines as that student, that student, mm. that student. Let's get you really thinking about burlesque. And so hopefully now people are starting to see that actually go to the teachers who, are, who know about their burlesque and know really. And thankfully for me, I've kind of got that reputation, but sorry, it's a bit egotistical to say my reputation is no, amazing. No, 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 you've, yes. got, to, you've got to shout. About my it. reputation is superb. I'm yeah. amazing. <laughs> Are we joking? No, I'm not. No, uh, no. And whereabouts do you perform? Is it just in London or no? Is it... All over the world. I've performed in Australia. Um, I've, I mean, I went on tour in Australia. I've performed in Paris and places, even in Jersey. Mm. <laughs> that was fantastic. Um, I I'm very fortunate. Um, I I. I'm car. I you know I get to people phone me up and go. Could you come perform here? Um, I performed at Trinity College, which is just down there at yeah. Cambridge, isn't it? Um, and you know it's opened so many doors for me. I mean, I did the film um, with Alan Moore. Sorry, name drop clanger. Mm. Um, I've it's. I mean, when I went on tour in Australia, I didn't think anyone would know who I was. And I arrived in Canberra, and there were people waiting to meet me. It was really bizarre. Mm. And um, it's it's been a really good journey, and it. You know, it, it's saturated the market now, so the wages are obviously taking a dip because, yeah. some, unfortunately, and there's a lot of shows. I can't move for shows sometimes. I'm thinking, wow, there's a lot of shows. But, you know, 
it's always a good plus side and the negative side. It means that more people are receptive to us, but it can also mean that we're quite saturated. So people are fighting for the jobs that we weren't fighting for before. Mm. And but I love it. It has it has saved me around the world. I